wanted to do this documentary for a couple days, but I'm never allowed. Because it's too late. So I don't even remember what I did like a day ago. So amazing how I survived this road. Feel the fever, I can feel it down inside my soul. And I will be the one to build you up. I'll build you up. I'll be the one to never doubt. I'll never doubt. Oh. Can you see how, can you see how far we come? Such a miracle. Whereas Lauren Hill, freshman at Mount St. Joseph University and member of the women's basketball team. Maybe you've known someone who told you they had a dream. Whereas over the past year, after being diagnosed with DIPG. And that before they die, they were going to make that dream come true. Whereas, knowing of Lauren's personal goal to play in a college basketball game. And you believed her. Lauren will take the court wearing her school jersey number 22. And then she told you she was going to die soon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Sunday, November 2nd, 2014, be and is hereby declared Lauren Hill Day in Delhi Township. We met such a girl who told us all these things and invited us along for a six-month journey to prove that every moment counts. Come on, God. Be with her. Be with her. Step out, bro. Come on, 22. Today has been the best day I've ever had. <laughs> November 20th, 2013. The day Lauren Hill was diagnosed with a disease that most had never heard of before, the IPG, diffused intrinsic pontine glioma. She was 18 years old, with a purpose. Like the sound of a whistle, for example. The sound of a whistle is loud, obnoxious, and it demands attention. A whistle is often thought of as a symbol of power or authority. You see drill sergeants using them, referees using them, when most people think about who uses a whistle, they think about coaches. To teach and inspire are two of the many jobs I face as being a coach. And my favorite of the jobs is to motivate. I love to motivate. My overall goal of this entire journey to become a coach is to become a coach as great as my dad was. Lauren had called me at the office when I was at work and said she wasn't feeling good and wasn't feeling right. Insisted that she needed to see someone. It's gone on long enough. Like some dizziness and she was either her eyes were off or she had an ear infection I mean she had a whole list of things that could possibly be wrong but nothing as a mom to put your finger on that would make sense and after she had gotten hit by the black eye and and symptoms seemed to keep getting increased I thought well maybe there's like some kind of you know swelling behind her eye that's putting pressure on her ear and it's throwing her equilibrium off and she was pretty passionate on that phone call that she needed to be seen, like, by the doctor. Well, maybe it is a concussion, like, you know, because I'm tired and have headaches, I'm dizzy, got vertigo. And I, I don't know, what else do you think about but concussion, you know? And I never really wanted to get diagnosed with a concussion because it was my last year of high school basketball and I didn't want to be sitting out on the bench for like a concussion or something. I was doing work on my computer and Britt was doing stuff in the, whatever he was doing in the other corner um, on his computer and Lauren was playing with the TV and in walks all these people. You know, I just figured they were residents and doctors and they come in herds. And there was probably anywhere between eight and 10 people came into the room. When I saw them walk in the room, with that many people, you knew something was wrong. And they're all just standing there in the corner, just like looking at me with sweet, 
sympathetic smiles like you know the bad news was coming. The initial thing they said was Lauren has a brain tumor. There was a spot on the MRI and that showed up and it was an inoperable brain tumor. I said okay, like what's next? Like they can't cut me open and get it out. What are they gonna give to me to make it go away? Even if surgery was possible, one would not be able to completely remove all of the tumor and the infiltrative part around the tumor. That was kind of when I blanked out. I got sick to my stomach. I thought I was gonna throw up. I started to cry. I literally thought I was gonna pass out. I mean, I got the tingly, prickly feelings and the room kind of got dark and it just, I could just feel myself just wanting to go over. What did Lauren do during this? I don't remember Lauren crying. I don't remember her crying at that point. But I asked a lot of questions. Will she die? Why isn't there a cure? And as an 18 year old, you are honest with her and she was fully aware of the difficulty in successfully treating this tumor. We didn't get home probably till 8.30 or 9 o'clock that night and had to tell Nathan and Aaron. <laughs> that was a hard conversation <laughs> to sit there in the living room and the realization that there's nothing they can do and that they're gonna lose their sister. And I came in and told me to sit down and they kind of just gave me the news. What'd they tell you? They're like, they just said she had a tumor. Like, I didn't know all the details. I really didn't know what to think. I just kind of sat down and stared at the floor for a little bit. Later in my school year, I found out what terminal means. Terminal didn't make a whole lot of sense to you at that point no. either. Are you remembering a moment when this hit where terminal connected with you? I left the class. You left the class? And went where? Just out in the hallway for a second. To do what? To gather my thoughts just like put things together where I heard that word before. Seen her around the house and her losing balance and falling and stuff on the court, kind of like it got to you. Did you ever get to that point where you said, I've got to talk about this? I talked to Lauren first. Do you remember what she said to you? Everything's gonna be all right. And did you believe her when she said that? She was scared though, I know she was scared because she slept in bed with us for probably two weeks straight um, and she wouldn't sleep in her bed by herself. So, you know, here's three adults in a king size bed, but that's okay. Since DIPG usually strikes kids between five and eight, Lauren wasn't the norm. Neither was Brendan Kelly. I'm Brendan Kelly and you know, Things happen, and you just got to make the best of them. He was 23, I think, at the time when they met, and they quickly became friends, and he filled her in on all kinds of extra stuff that the doctors don't tell you, like you're going to have chemo brain and be absent-minded. And I guess they met, like, the end of December, and in March he had passed away. Never lose hope. I mean, that's the biggest thing. There's just too much of it <laughs> to lose it. I, I stumble over hope all the time. And there's no point not to hope. Because if you, if you already succumb to kind of just defeat, then why are you still here? So I'm going to be fighting until the day I'm not. And I think it was at that point that she decided that it's a losing battle. She's going. You know, like, do you want to live and feel really good about what you're doing? 
with a good body or do you want to talk you know make yourself all toxic and weighed down and be miserable the rest of the time and watching Brendan pass away on something that she was doing herself probably felt like why why bother so she stopped the chemo and just lived you named the tumor yes would you like to share the name of the tumor yes well we decided we'd heard a story about this little boy and he was ohio state fan mm -hmm. and he named his tumor michigan that way he like when he was battling it would be beat michigan and then i just i was like man i need a nickname too and i ended up making the doctors print out a picture of my mri because i decided i wanted to stare it down and give it the death stare like you're going down and i remember asking mom i was like mom pull out the picture of the little bastard <laughs> that's the see. name yeah i was like let me see the little bastard that's in my head my unwelcome friend tlb tlb long before diagnosis lauren hill loved life and what brought her the most joy was being on the court before that, being on the pitch, otherwise known as the soccer field. She was the starting goalie for the JV team at Lawrenceburg High School in her junior year, but her course was about to change when after her senior year tryouts, Lauren was cut, unfairly according to her. She wrote a paper about it for English class entitled, When Everything Changed. The lesson, life isn't fair. People will always have things happen to them that will knock them down but it's bouncing back to one's feet that's the most important part. Life's about learning, and without it, there's really no point in life. What happened to me, whether I know the true reason or not, happened for some greater reason. And even after all the bad things, in the end, I was thankful for being put down and cut to pieces because it had done nothing but made me stronger as a person. Her little dog, Sophie, agreed. So basketball it was. She was bound and determined to go to college, play college basketball. I was just getting over an appendectomy and I wasn't doing good. And I was like, man, I gotta make a memory. Like on my birthday, I gotta make a good memory that I can go back and remember. And I decided that that was the night I was gonna call the coach and confirm that I was coming to the mount to play. Walked up, went to shake her hand, which is what you're supposed to do when you first meet somebody, and that didn't take place. She looked at me and grabbed me and hugged me. That's when I knew there was somebody special right there. Still, college basketball season was a year away, and DIPG doesn't guarantee a month, let alone a year. No one knows that better than Brooke Deserick, who, with her husband Keith, created The Cure Starts Now, after they lost their six-year-old daughter, Elena, nine months after diagnosis. There was no hope. And I remember thinking at the time, that is so wrong. That is so wrong that the doctors can't even give you one ounce of hope. One night she couldn't sleep and so she and I were sitting on the couch watching silly shows and making fun of them. And I said, you know, I'm gonna keep fighting. And she just looked at me and shook her head. I said, well, I'll keep fighting if you want to, if you want to let go, I'm okay with that. I could have taken her death, crawled into a ball, and moved on with my life. Um, but there was nobody out there searching. This is the worst bully on the block when it comes to cancer. No surgery, no chemotherapies hitting it. There's a blood-brain barrier that's forcing medicine not, not to get to the tumors. And they said, this is the key. The key to, if we can find out how to cure this, you're, you can easily find the cure for most every other cancer, adult and child. And if they were going to fight the biggest bully on the block, they needed a voice. That wasn't her. I, I, it was amazing. I mean, she was always, um, she was always very quiet, very passive. It was never her 
aspiration to go out and actually just become this huge voice. It really did just happen. She was the ambassador, but nothing ever happened. And, you know, a couple of the reporters were like, maybe we'll check back with you, you know, when you go off to college and do a quick check-in, and that was that. And Most kids affected by this disease are really young, so they can't voice their opinions on what happens. So I feel like I was chosen to be the voice to kind of voice what's happening and get it out there and make sure people know about it and spread awareness. Lauren has now teamed up with The Cure Starts Now. She had told us that, you know, she'd spent some time in her room and, you know, basically had a talk with God in her mind and said, whatever, you know, whatever you throw at me, I'm going to take and I'm going to do it. I feel like I asked for it. In, How so? Back in January when I prayed really hard one night because I was desperate and I would ask God that, I mean, I didn't want to be another local story that disappeared and I just became another statistic on a paper, you know, another deceased. That was your prayer? Yeah, and I prayed that God would keep me there and if he kept me, I would do anything I could to be the voice for little kids. She sat in my office one day after I became the head coach and uh, she said, uh, Coach, I got two choices. I can lay in my bed and die, or I can fight and play in a basketball game and be a voice and carry on a mission that I think is very important. And when she said that, I knew that was the answer I needed to hear, that I needed to push forward for her. Because with DIPG, it's in your control panel in the ponds, and if it touches on one nerve, you could no longer be breathing or you could no longer be swallowing just shuts down whatever it wants to whenever it bumps into the wrong thing. And um, we had to go back and explain to Bear that it was growing and we didn't know like how much time she would have. So Coach Bear began to work the phones, not only with the NCAA, but with Hiram College to get what was scheduled as a late November road opener to a home opener as quickly as he could. You know, it's not often a little division three college basketball coach gets a call from the president of the NCAA and uh, Mark gave me a call and he said coach whatever you want just tell us he said we'll take care of the, the other paperwork and we'll get you in the right place from that point on everything we wanted to do they just passed through and approved it was really hard at first um, but we've been trying to do the best we can and raise money for the foundation that she's involved in and really also focus on the game um, that's something that Lauren has obviously shown that she loves is the game of basketball. So we've been trying to prepare and uh, get ready for the game and just work on the competition and focus on that. My worst fear, you know, going into my senior year is tearing my ACL or spraining an ankle. Um, and she's just worried about making it to one last game. Bear also called Local 12, desperate for a story that might help his cause. The beauty of typical Lauren, she sits up in bed and wants to know she can still play basketball. The answer was yes, if you can do it through chemotherapy and radiation, so Lauren did. Not like she used to, but giving up wasn't an option, which she shared with her high school teammates. She's like, you girls will not quit playing ball because I'm not there. She's like, I'll, you know, I'll come after you. That was, that was her message. She's like, if I'm not there and I can't be there, you girls better be out there playing. And don't be feeling sorry for me. Never give up. Motto is never give up. We streamlined it. All of us huddled around a laptop. And I think there were like nine of us all squished around um, this laptop in the kitchen watching the story. We just learned yesterday the NCAA has granted an exemption for the Mount to open its season Sunday, November 2nd at home. They will tip off against Hiram College at 2 p.m. And Lauren will suit up in number 22 and play. We'll be right back. I remember sitting around the cabin and everyone was freaking out about Lauren hitting a couple hundred thousand followers or something. When we woke up and it had, gosh, just shy of a million hits. Like, I just knew, like, my gut told me, this is big. 
this is way spread like wildfire. I think I got more phone calls as soon as that story broke and one of them was from Coach Hayes at Hireman saying, hey, we'll move the game to you. Xavier reached out, Coach Mack texted me and said, Coach, the gym's available. I talked to my AD, we sent you an email, we sent Steve Radcliffe an email, our gym's available if you want it. All of a sudden we were talking about growing out of Mount St. Joe for the game and looking at bigger venues, U.S. Bank Arena or Cintas. Oh, Lawrence says, uh, Coach, what do you think? What should I do? Boy, I'm glad I didn't make that choice. I might have screwed it up and played at the Mount where we didn't have enough seats. <laughs> um, and we discussed it and Lawrence said, Coach, I really want to make that first basket on our floor. And she said, but I know I can make a bigger, bigger voice happen if I move it. And I said, you're absolutely right there. And she said, well, we're going to go ahead and move it. <clears throat> I said, that's a great choice. We had this conversation that God is opening doors for you. He picked you for a reason. And you can choose to ignore the doors and not go through them, or you can choose to keep going through the doors that he's opening for you and let it take you wherever it takes you. She didn't just want to be famous. That wasn't anything she did. It just happened. My goal is to have all the tickets um, from Brett by uh, Thursday morning. By then, people kind of go, I'm not really sure if I'm going to go to the game or not. And so then we start selling out of the box office from there. The numbers game was already in play, and numbers were important to Lauren. So whether by chance or by fate, the 10,000 tickets went on sale to the Cintas Center the morning of October 22. Less than an hour, that's how long it took for a Division Three women's basketball team to sell out the Cintas Center today. Wow. <laughs> it was just like a one-word answer. That's kind of what I've been saying all morning was, wow. Because I'm speechless that there is no words for it. It's amazing. I remember the day, October 22nd. <laughs> How can you forget number 22? Maybe I'll be in a wheelchair. Maybe I don't know how I'll be in two weeks from now, but I'm going to be there spreading awareness. Now, does that's the first time I've heard you say that. Is there a concern? That, there is yeah. a concern. Of course, there's always a concern because I'm in the disease progression stage. So that's kind of a big thing that ends up happening toward the end. So I'm kind of holding off and hoping that doesn't happen. Do you have a hope, a belief on her ability to take the floor on November 2nd? She will rock it on November 2nd. Dad, I've been sitting here all day. <laughs> Lauren wasn't one to sit around worrying if she would make it to the court. After all, her mission was much bigger now. It's like Christmas because you're getting so many packages and you open up one and you see another one that's really neat like this one and then you see another one that they have it personalized to Lauren. Makes it exciting. You, we have to thank the NCAA. We have to thank Mark personally for sending that blast out to all the colleges and universities and then them reaching out and giving them back. 506 colleges and universities sent in number 22 jerseys. Lauren signed them all for auction. It's just amazing how big this has gotten <laughs> and I feel like it's going to make a movement and it's going to bring a change. And if she was in need of strength, it was all around her. In the tiny town of Greendale and throughout Lawrenceburg, signs of encouragement, decals to go on all of the police vehicles, even a semi-trailer set up for the community to share their messages of love and support. Lauren Hill put Lawrenceburg on the map. On October 29th, Coach Rod Huber asked Lauren to address his Mount St. Joe football team. After all, she was famous now. Lauren, any other words of advice for young men in the world, in the real world out there? Um, not really. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just keep living in the moment because Amen. the next one doesn't matter and the past doesn't matter. Anything that matters is just what's happening right now exactly in the second. Right. Does this hit you as to what you're doing? Kind of, yeah just feels unreal about how big it's gotten. I would have never expected it to reach this far, touch this many people. How's it feel? It feels awesome.
DIPG has taken away way too many lives, but now with your help, you can do Lauren's Layup Challenge. Okay, Lauren's Layup Challenge. <laughs> Lay it for Lauren. Lay, Lay up for Lauren's challenge. It just, Lauren does, it just doesn't come out naturally. Oh, but it would for millions. American Sports Network's Bill Lutzen called me to ask, how can we raise a million dollars for this cure? And after brainstorming, we arrived on a simple but meaningful layup. Mimic her dizziness and her inability to shoot with her right hand and build on the ALS ice bucket challenge that had happened the summer before see if we could make it go viral. The challenge is this, you have to spin around five times and shoot with your non-dominant hand. And if you make it, you get to pass it on. If you miss it, it's a $10 donation for The Cure Starts Now. You got this. Right. We got this. There we go. <laughs> so we challenged LeBron James, Spud Webb, the Dallas Mavericks, Becky Harmon, the first female coach for the San Antonio Spurs, Coach Zane White from the Lady Lawrenceburg Tigers. And how about some football guys, Andy Whitworth and Andy Dalton. Let's see if you can make the layup for Lauren. And it went viral from the Bengals. We're accepting the layups for Lauren challenge. To the Musketeers. To the Globetrotters. To Garth Brooks. Hey, Lauren. Even Mia Hamm. Hi, Lauren. This is Mia Hamm. Lauren Hill had captivated a nation in two weeks leading up to what our creative services team had dubbed her one last game. The three words that I try to live my life by, the first word is build. Uh, I always want to be a part of things that build. The second word is serve. I thought service is the greatest quality of a leader. And the third is empower. If you build and serve, then you will empower other people. When I think about this event and what a long-lasting experience it's going to be and, and something that's been impactful on my life, I think that you guys have done these three words already. Wish you the best of luck in your game tomorrow, Lauren. You're, you have given me a new definition of amazing grace. <laughs> Thanks. You know, us at Xavier, as small a part as we can be in, in furthering Lauren's cause and helping, uh, we want to do that. And this is, I know I gave you an autograph ball the other day, but this is your own official Xavier wow. uniform there, Lauren. That's right. awesome. Good luck tomorrow. I know our team's going to be here, and we're going to be rooting you on. And Dan was going to say, hey, I'm going to be a little nervous. There's 10,250 <laughs> fans here tomorrow. But just understand, they're rooting for you guys. All right? They're rooting for you guys. So play hard, and um, I think to get the day tomorrow is going to be an awesome day. Hey, this floor is no different than our floor, just a little bit prettier. Let's get focused. Let's finish what we need to do here, all right? And we're down that baseline. Hey, play for 22. Let's go. One, two, three. Play for 22. 22. Atta girl. There you go. Pop out. Good. There it is. There it is. Oh, you got it. You got it. There it is. Good. Good. There it is. There it is. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got it. For the able bodied people, the preparations leading up to this game were exhausting. For the freshman forward with a tumor on her brain stem, they were debilitating. Opponents don't have dinner together the night before a game. Normally, that would be uncomfortable. I think we were a little nervous coming into the game because um, we didn't know what to expect. We've never really had an experience like this. And just meeting her, it kind of took those nerves and the scaredness away. But the season opener these teams were about to play was anything but normal. People just didn't get it yet. And I felt for her. Even my own family and friends, when I told them what was going on, they didn't get it yet. So um, we came back in that following Monday and I had my team meeting and I told the players what was going on. And it was hard. It was hard to tell them that here's a special person who's got a zero chance of surviving. So when we got done with this meeting, all we could think of is this, and that was to play for 22. And we're gonna play for you as hard as we can all season long, girl. And there's nothing sweeter than to wear this shirt ever. So for you guys at Hiram, each one of you have one, and I hope you wear it with pride. I feel like the second I walked into the room, I could just feel how she lights up a room. She's one of the greatest people I ever met, 
and just talking to her for two minutes. Basketball and being on this team is much more than just being on a team. It's a family. And tomorrow is more than a game. It's the greatest life experience that we will all experience. We just never expected it to get this big, this important to just, not just to her, but to both teams and her family, our families. It's incredible. It's just something that we never thought we'd ever experience in our lives. I really truly hope we can just give her a game, you know, that she wanted, you know, a competition she wanted, the game that she loves, and display that. And so kind of tune all that out, even though it's amazing, and just give her, you know, her actual, her real dream. She wanted to play in a college basketball game, and I want to give that to her. Tell me what November 2nd looks like. November 2nd is going to be a big day. A very, very, very big day. I'm going to be running around everywhere. I just not even know what to do. Kind of like a chicken with your head cut off, like confused. I'm so excited to step out on that floor and feel the vibrations of the floorboards and all the people cheering and the echo of it and the energy, because that's where I get all my energy from. And that's where I find my, most of my strength is from the people. Today, I want to spread awareness. And today, I want to be a big day. And today, I don't want it to be the last day, because I'm just so happy that it spread this far. It was rough getting her up that morning. She was sick to her stomach from the steroids, um, everything just hurt. She, she was not feeling good at all, and I was worried that she wouldn't be able to rebound and actually get the energy to go and play. At that point in time, Lisa had been texting me, oh, Laura's not feeling the greatest. We're working our way there. I said, you just let me know. We'll stay in the chapel until she gets here. You and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land. We were at Mount St. Joe and then... And then hundreds, thousands were lining up to pack the pike, waiting along Delhi Pike to see Lauren, if only for a moment, as her team bus would make its way to the Centos Center. And I think, you know, that was probably the turning point of the day for her. We got on the bus and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to have a nice easy ride. We're going to be excited. We're going to get a police escort. This is pretty neat. Little did I know, as soon as we turned on, on the pike, and got up over the hill, people were lined up. I've never seen that in my life. People were lined up down that pike. <coughs> with signs. Love you, 22. These are people who never met her. All the girls were excited, and you could feel like the energy of everybody. I guess you never know like who's going to show up. So all of a sudden, you get there, and there's all these people just cheering. And Lauren's face was all lit up and and just amazed that all these people were cheering on you know her and Mount St. Joe. There's a lot of people. <laughs> You're doing good kid. You're doing good. When we got to Xavier and got in the locker room she really started feeling bad. She's a little sluggish right now but we're feeding her so she seems to be picking up a little bit since we moved her over in the locker room, get some energy with the girls. And then the plan for steroids is what? Um, a good dose, probably here about 12.30. We're gonna go in there, you guys get to relax. Eat your lunch, just get yeah. in kind of a game mode, all right? And let's enjoy the moment here, all right? Family on three, one, two, three, family! It's so cool to see that somebody has something like this and that it's eventually going to get to them and they're not going to be here anymore, but they're, they're not letting it get to them while they're here. They're just living life and they're going to make the most of every opportunity that they have. We went out for warm-ups. She walked out there. There was probably only a thousand people out there for our shoot around and the warm-ups and uh, as soon as she hit the floor, they started cheering for her. I remember walking down to greet some of the children that we had there that had illnesses that were with the Cure Starts Now and I watched her and I watched the impact that girl makes. And she made it that day, just greeting the families and greeting those kids and you know, knowing that she's given hope for the future. It's that she's so sincere about playing basketball and that's what it is. There's nothing 
artificial about her or about what she's trying to do. You know, she's not trying to get 15 minutes of fame or anything like that. It, and, you know, the love of the sport is really what has driven her to this. To actually be able to touch the world like we're touching the world, I just could have never imagined in a million years. Your daughter has changed the world. Proud beyond belief. Beyond belief, I'm proud. <laughs> I'm excited. I feel very excited for today. Today, I'm kind of excited. I am. <laughs> Are you going to let anybody see that? Uh, my excitement? Mm hmm. Probably not. No. All right, we're going to leave the room and you're going to bond the gray girls. This is a gray game. All right, pretty, pretty cut and dry, ladies, if you look at the quote up there. God said you would finish what you started in my life. You said we'd see the surpassing greatness of your power. You said you would supply our needs according to your riches. He's done it. He's done it. We've been blessed. We've been blessed with her on our team. You got one heck of a teammate right here. I got one heck of a team. <laughs> Had a girl. Had a girl. It doesn't get any better than this. I already had that atmosphere, ladies. Now it's time to go play. I'm going to tell you this right now. I love you. Love you. We want more. We want more. We want more. I'm not never give up. Never give up. <laughs> never give up on three. One, two, three. Never give up. Today, if just for the moment, the country is focused here in the Queen City of Cincinnati for a women's college basketball game because of one woman. Brad Johansson alongside my good friend and women's college basketball great Deb Antonelli. We're thrilled to be with you here today to bring you the story of Lauren Hill. I think we're ready. What do you think? I think we're ready, girl. We're going to go baseline. We'll go in the middle. We'll get them, all right? Here we go. We'll go right here. All right, girl. I think my most vivid memory is just the sound in the arena. Because, I mean, I've been to a lot of football games and a lot of basketball games. I've certainly never been to a basketball game that was that loud. I'm so proud of you. Go have fun, you hear me? Hey, we're here. Let's complete the mission. All right, here we go. We had the play drawn up. And Hiram was in on it. They let us win the tip. And Lauren sets high. Come on, 22! The screen comes. The ball goes down to Lauren Hill. And the layup is good. A layup for Lauren. And number 22, we will remember that layup forever. I was so glad that fate was on her side and she actually made it. It would have been a disaster if she didn't make it. Because <laughs> everybody was, you know, wanting her to, to have that moment. And Come on, God. Be with her. Be with her. Step out, bro. Come on, 22. <laughs> Make, you can do this. Make the shot. You know, just wanting her to succeed. Um, and then when she did it, it was just, it was amazing. How good does this feel? This feels like, <laughs> I've never felt so good in my entire life. One last game. Let's play some more. Let's not call it my last game. You want to go somewhere? <laughs> this is my first collegiate game. Let's go with the first collegiate game for Lauren Hill. <laughs> You're one for one on the stat sheet. At halftime, the U.S. basketball riders presented Lauren with the Pat Summit Courage Award with the Hall of Famer in attendance. But Lauren wanted more. Towards the end of the game, you could hear her holler and coach, and finally she got a hold of one of the assistant coaches. and she said, I really want to go back in the game. I really want to go back in the game. Stands at the high post, cuts down low. Come on, Terry! 
And Lauren with the left. Get it, get the it. rebound, Dennis. Hit it again. Get That's it, to Lauren. She goes back up and down. She scored the first basket and the last. 66-55, Mount St. Joe. And the numbers girl would tell you that six plus six plus five plus five equals 22. Your outstanding courage, dignity, and class in facing your tragic illness is a source of light and inspiration to everyone, not just here in the greater Cincinnati area, but throughout the world. We are proud and honored to present this Wilma Rudolph Courage Award to Lauren Hill. Today has been the best day I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Then all the teams from the Heartline Conference that came to watch her wanted to be near her and to keep her with them forever. All these visits have been amazing today. And I mean, the biggest one of all is that I'm spreading awareness and that's, that's what I'm happy today for. And I really hope that, you know, I can bring a change in the world. And the banner representing Lauren's legacy will hang in the GMS gym this year and be placed in the new gymnasium for years to come. On November 22, Lawrenceburg High School would retire her jersey and create a scholarship fund in her name. I feel like I'm leaving a legacy. Do you? And it makes, it just makes me feel important. One, two, three, play for 22! 22 would appear in three more games, scoring three more baskets, including one on the Harrington Center floor at Mount St. Joe that meant so much to her. The last two games she probably shouldn't have played in, but she wanted to play on that home court. This was my dream to score on this floor, and it felt amazing. She may have been done playing, but Lauren was a long way from leaving center court. Her celebrity only grew. They loved Lauren in China and Japan. She was featured on numerous national programs. There aren't a lot of athletes that get featured on a Wheaties box, even fewer on the cover of EA Sports NBA Live. LeBron sent her a pair of shoes. The world wanted to know Lauren. What most of the world didn't know was that long before one last game, Lauren's mission had become more focused. One more day, one more dollar, one step closer to a cure for someone else. Am I talking loud enough? Yes. yes. A lot of people just saw that, that front, that she was being the voice and stepping up and rising to those occasions, but I, they just didn't understand what energy that it took to do that. Hopefully with this research and in finding the home run cure, they don't have to say, you know, it's a terminal diagnosis. You know, I hope that one day or that this will give them like something. Instead of saying like hope, we hope that you'll make it past two years and we hope that you'll do this. It'll be possible. Possible. Her body language would be like all, you know, slutchy and slouchy and you could tell, like just by her face, you could read that she just didn't feel good. And then she'd put her shoulders back, the camera would come on, she would give this great feel of whatever they were asking her and she would answer all the questions perfect and flawless and it's like, where did that even come from? And then the camera would go off and she'd go back like, Okay, I just want to go home. One week after that check presentation was the one year anniversary of Lauren's diagnosis. She marked it by swapping jerseys with the father of another cancer patient, the Bengals Devin Still. The way that everybody's sticking together and trying to raise awareness, I know we're going to have a big impact on this yeah. one day. So, like I said, thanks for this jersey. Like I said, this is probably the most memorable jersey swap that I'm ever going to have because this jersey right here means way more to me than swapping out just a regular football jersey so it makes me feel awesome <laughs> <laughs> the moments of feeling awesome were rare for everyone in the family 
the first day that we talked to them in October of 2014 in their living room, we wondered about the toll that this would take. And during this time, as they sit silently listening to everybody talk about Lauren, there are other children. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's it do to, uh, to Nate and, and to Aaron to have to deal with this and, and watching that and the focus ends up being on, on one girl because mm -hmm. of the circumstances? I would hope they know that I don't want them any less. <laughs> and that the focus has to be on Lauren because we only have a certain amount of time, but I love them just as much. I was like really overwhelmed and I just wanted everybody to go away. Really just gotta run with it. There's no really Preparation just kind of hits you and you got to take the punches as they come. Did it feel like you'd lost your sister because everybody else had her? Erin has become like a woman in like a year. It's like so scary how much she's like changed because I think she's beautiful. and she's getting braces soon. And I just keep thinking how I want to see her with her braces off. <laughs> because that'd be really, really awesome. <laughs> and Nathan, he's still silent. He kind of avoids, avoids it and ignores it and just doesn't want to think about it. On this day, Lauren was making gifts for Aaron and Nate ones that she hoped would last well beyond Christmas. I never really looked at the true meaning behind it. You know, everyone's giving gifts and stuff. And just thinking about how material things aren't really what matters the most. It's like spending time with the people you love. My headaches haven't bothered me, except for when I'm overdue to take my pills. But my headaches haven't bothered me. My joints have bothered me, but I mean, seriously, it's just my stomach. My stretch marks are getting bigger and my belly's getting bigger, so my shirts don't fit. And <laughs> I'm kind of worried about what people have gotten me for Christmas because I'm probably not gonna fit in anything. During the holiday, we wanna make a difference and together we can. Help us raise a million dollars for DIPG research before the new year. Just ten dollars will be all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up at Lauren's house that day telling her that we were shooting a public service announcement with the crazy notion to raise a million dollars for DIPG research. I really want to reach this million dollar goal by the end of the year. And I don't think it's going to happen. How much would you like to donate this morning? Before the day even started, we had our, our meeting together with our staff, and I said, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. I just know it. Today's going to be fun, and I think today we're going to reach our million dollar goal. What do you mean, think? We're going we to. Are. Everyone says we're going to, so. Ah! We received a call pretty early on in the day from a gentleman who said, you know, I have a pretty significant donation I want to bring in. They had a shoebox in their hands. He had bought her a uh, brand new pair of uh, Jordans, um, which she was thrilled to death. She pulled those out and just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Um, and then they had a check inside the box. And we wanted to announce that we just got an anonymous donation for $116,000. Today is the day. Today's the day I reached my goal. I'm just so happy that it's having this big of an impact. And I want to thank everyone for <laughs> donating and helping research. From our very first meeting, we knew Lauren Hill had extraordinary powers. When I got home, I told my parents that I was going to wear it around underneath all my clothes like it's a superhero uniform. <laughs> she donned a cape in her weakest moments and shared her powers with others, like Super Luke, who promised to keep her mission alive but this superhero's pain had become intolerable. And the line goes up through my shoulder and over my chest and down into my heart, right? My heart, or one of the veins that leads to my heart. 
but it constantly releases pain medicine. And we really should have done this a long time ago because I feel a lot better. Living at home was no longer an option, so Lauren checked into Children's Hospital on February 3rd under the alias Lauren Hamptonshire. Superheroes need anonymity. They also need credentials. And on February 6th, Mount St. Joe's would provide those. Something she was super excited, you know, and honored that they even were going to allow her to graduate early and that she was going to be a doctor. She thought that was way cool, and she really thought she was a doctor, too, after that, I might add. An honorary doctorate in humane letters. You have accomplished much, even more than most of us here could imagine accomplishing in our own lives. We were trying to decide, like, who would be walking with her, and I remember going, no, Brent, you're going to do that. You take this one. I'll just go and sit with the kids. And I intentionally did that because I knew he would never walk her down the aisle as a bride. I wanted him to have that moment of being a proud dad and walking him, walking Lauren down the aisle. Lauren, you may change your tassel from right to left. I can't believe it's been so long since the first game. February 24th, a long three and a half months after that first game, Mount St. Joe's year-end basketball banquet at Children's Hospital, down the hall from Lauren's room. When we started this season, we didn't know what was going to happen. But there was nothing sweeter than to walk in that Senta Center and watch you ladies perform and help Lauren finish the mission with the first basket in the last basket of that game. I mean, we made it. There's three words. We made it, and it's something, I mean, we're so proud to have her here with us, and we wouldn't want it any other way. Saying thank you for changing my life, and she'll always be my sister. And I'll always cherish every moment we've had together. Forever. Can you see them? I've never even gained weight there. It hurt so bad. Dear Lauren, for you to read and believe with a smiley face. The last couple months of her life, she would request Bible verses daily. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I feel like I've done more than my job. And I can't help but think that I don't want to be done. I want to keep going. Can you talk a little bit about your mom? She hasn't left your side. She's a wonder mom. Because you're beautiful. I don't know how she does it. Because I still feel like this is really unfair. I don't know how any of these moms do it. I think she was scared of like, us and how we would handle it afterwards. And I think what she was most worried about, but she so believed in God that, like heaven for her was real. How I wanted it to happen and how I like dream of death to happen. And I just told him I want to die in comfort and in my sleep. So we got up and sat around the bed and she just, uh, Stop breathing. That was peaceful. She passed on her college stat day. She played in four games and scored 10 points. And she died on April 10th. She started the season and she stayed through the whole season. I think the impact she had makes some of it worth it. But in the end, I'd just like to have her back. She said, I love you, and I think you're the most beautiful girl in the world. To watch her live the way she did, again, you know, that just reiterated living for the day, because tomorrow is definitely never given. I tell her how proud I am and how amazing the legacy is she's left behind. Although she didn't go out to be a voice, she became a voice. And hopefully she is a hero for these kids because 
she didn't want a five-year-old to go through this. It needs to change, and she wanted it to change. I was just hoping that I did everything he put me in this world for. Dad's just watching me. Because I love you. Because he says it, it's because he loves me. Nothing has changed.